the pyramids of ancient Egypt include some of the most famous monuments on earth. Giza, on the outskirts of Cairo, is home to the Great Pyramid of Giza and a number of other pyramids. It is one of the three pyramids still standing at Giza and is considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Throughout history, pyramids have been built in many different cultures all over the world. The Egyptians were first to build pyramids and they were the first to use them as tombs for their pharaohs. The Giza pyramid contains three large pyramids, known as Khufu, Khafre and Menkoli. They are some of the largest structures ever built on earth. Now the Great Pyramid of Giza is also known as Khufu's Pyramid or the Pyramid of Cheops and is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Egyptian civilization lasted more than 3,000 years and there were many different periods when they built pyramids. They were constructed during a time when the Egyptian civilization was at its peak in terms of technical sophistication, wealth and power. The pyramids are not just tombs or funerary monuments, they are also symbols of emperor's power and permanence. It is mentioned that when a queen or king of a particular emperor died there belonging, another day to day used things were also kept along with their bur burials. Giza is the only site in Egypt where one can find all three types of pyramid. The step pyramid, a pyramid with concave sides called true pyramids, and pyramids with convex sides called false pyramids. The great pyramids are one of the most iconic monuments in the world. What is their true purpose? The pyramids are the most iconic and instantly recognisable structures on earth. They have been a source of intrigue and mystery for thousands of years and since ages they have been closely studied by archaeologists and historians of time. To our surprise the pyramid is made using 23 lac stones and each stone approximately weighs 2,000 kilograms. The stones even weigh about 70,000 kilograms. Yes, you heard it right, 70,000 kilograms. It sounds <laughs> impossible, I know, but it is a fact. So now coming upon the construction of these pyramids, basically they are built in such a manner that the position of the pyramid completely coincides with the three stars of the Orion constellation in the sky. Now what's the connection of Egyptians with the Orion constellation? What theory do they have? Another important thing to mention here is that the three edges of the pyramids are in complete alignment with north, east, west and south direction. And this was built at a time when the compass wasn't even invented. Throughout history, pyramids have been built in many different cultures all over the world. The Egyptians were the first to build pyramids and they were the first to use them as tombs of their pharaohs. They built such massive structures at a time without any technological assistance. Hence here we are to answer all your questions and feed your curiosity. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. As we know that the pyramid was built 2,500 years back with 23 lac stones each weighing 2,000 kilograms. Another layer of pyramid was also made up of granite which, com which commonly weighs around a mass of 200 tons. You would be surprised to know that the height of this pyramid is about 146.6 metres, which is uh, approximately about a 30 storey building. Its base is around 240 metres with an inclination of 51 degrees. Now this piece of information may sound boring to you, but you can imagine building such a huge monument during a time when technology wasn't even developed to the extent to support a huge structure with a heavy mass from top to bottom. Thus, this is a huge achievement. Pyramids are recognised as the world's highest human-made monument, but later on its record was broken by St Paul's Cathedral of London. This is sort of mesmerising, I know, but guys, what do you think? How would the late Egyptians make this huge monument with pinpoint accuracy and no machinery? How is it possible that a monu monument could last more than a thousand years? It's getting more curious, right?
keep with me so you can feed your curiosity with proper scientific explanations. So, to build any big structure, the first thing to make is a strong foundation. Thus, the initial stage includes the making of a base pyramid, as we know that in the geographical terrain of Giza is very uneven and rough. We cannot directly construct a base upon upon it. So, the step here is to build a flat land, and before even starting construction, the foremost important thing to check is the alignment of the pyramid with Earth. As we know that Giza is perfectly aligned with all four directions of Earth with just 0.05 degrees of error. Now the big question is, how would they have perfectly aligned the pyramid with all four directions of Earth when the compass wasn't even discovered? Now researchers believe that the Egyptians of those times were very sharp in astronomy, hence it's been assumed that the Egyptians decided the direction taking the North Star as reference with Earth. There is one problem here, that is, the sceptic. We already know that Earth is constantly revolving, like Bumblebee, so thus this depicts the position of the North Star, but also changes place after a few thousands of years. And for that particular period of thousands of years, the Pole Star isn't seen there now, and probably same conditions like this occurred 2,000 to 3,000 years ago. So the real question is how did those late Egyptians locate the North Star during 2,500 years ago when it wasn't even seen or located? Now the reasons for this are as follows. We all know that stars revolve around the North Pole Star. According to research carried out by scientists, they noted down the revolution of a few stars and calculated one imaginary centre of stars in a common which is expected as a North Pole star. Hence, they might also use this method to call the North Pole. So, now after levelling the flatland and determining the direction, the three most crucial parts of constructing the pyramid. Now, to construct a pyramid, they need heavy stones which are extracted from Earth's surface. But the question here is how would they have extracted stones from the, from the surface of the earth without any tools and technological assistance? As for making tools, they require copper, which is found towards the east of Giza, beyond the Red Sea in Sinai. Now to reach Sinai, they have to cross over the River Nile through, through the fissures of Aljaraf and then go beyond the Red Sea. After reaching there, it wasn't possible for them to bring all the copper together with them as they could not contain all the copper in the boats. Thus they made new boats from woods of cider forest located there. So through this long process, they are finally able to carry copper back to Egypt. After that, they start collecting stones from the tools they, make, they made from copper. To make the inner structure of the pyramid, they required granite and yellow limestones for making other parts. During those times, pyramids were in height colours and their outer surfaces well polished with greasy white limestones, and due to this they reflected and shined. Egypt has a great quantity of limestone formation, with the, which the Egyptians called white stone, because during the Cretaceous period, Egypt was covered with seawater. The country is also rich in sandstone, but it was never really used much until the New Kingdom. The blocks were marked out with just enough space in between each one to allow for a small passageway for the workers to cut the blocks. The workmen would use a number of different tools to cut the blocks, including copper pickaxes, chisels, granite hammers, dolerite and other hard stone tools. When these stones are cut with the help of those tools, made up of copper into dolerite, um, the powder which removed during cutting of the rock is used as cement. And now all the work of cutting and shaping the stone was done, the major difficulty faced by the builders of that time was the mode of carrying heavy stones. How would they have carried such huge rocks to the height they required? So, to solve out this equation, the ramps were built uh, on inclined planes of mud and, mud and rubble. They dragged the huge blocks on sledges to the needed height. 
As the pyramid grew taller, the ramp had to be extended in length, and its base was widened, else it would collapse. It is likely that for the construction of each pyramid, several ramps were probably used. Now, as the height of the pyramid increased, the angle of the ramps also increased, and thus making it more difficult to take other blocks upwards. To solve this problem, they made a different type of two spiral ramps, one from the inside and another one from the outside direction. The inner ramps were used to carry two ton rocks up, and the outer ramps were used to carry 50 ton heavy rocks. Amazingly, these ramps were made of smaller stones, so they could uh, be used in in fitting after works get over. Thus due to this thus due to this reason, inner and outer ramps are not visu visible. So guys, in short, like this, the Great Pyramid of Giza is formed. But there's a catch. Now the total volume of the Khufu Pyramid is 2.7 times 10 to the 7 meters cubed and it took almost 20 to 30 years of work, which means every worker had to fit an average of 200 to 300 blocks of 1 meter cubed and for that they had to mould and shape each rock with sensitive tools like copper and dolerite in every 20 seconds with 100% efficiency, which is not fully achievable even with today's technology. So. The researchers claim that the limestone in the pyramids had uneven particles of sodium, chlorine and sulphur, and the particles of limestone found in the mines were even. This means that maybe those rocks were man-made. Some researchers claim that the limestone in the pyramid had uneven particles of sodium, chlorine and sulphur, and the particles of limestone found in the mines were even. This means that maybe those rocks were man-made. It means that the powder of limestone was created in a mould by mixing it with many more powders of stones. There's more research on this. It says that the composition of stones of white limestone in the mines of Tora is 96 to 99% calcite, 0.5 to 2.5% quartz, dolomite, iron, aluminosilicate, gypsum-like minerals, and the stone used in the pyramid had 85-90% to 90 calcite, uh, opal CT, hydroxyapatite-like spiced minerals which were not found in any other natural limestone. Does this mean that these stones were carried upwards in a powdered form? Smart, right? We don't know if it's completely right. Um, researchers and historians don't know if it's right. But what do you guys think? Make sure to comment below your ideas. <laughs>